Hello. In this presentation, we will be discussing how to implement table-based CRCs in Verilog. You might ask, what is the need for table-based CRCs in Verilog? Basically, before we can talk about how to implement CRCs in Verilog or fast CRCs in Verilog, maybe it's worthwhile talking a little bit about the history of CRCs themselves which date back to 1961. A CRC, as you can see in this implementation, is a way of computing a checksum, which is a digest of a message which is sent over a network or stored in some disk, etc. The error detecting codes can help us find if the data that we had stored on a disk or transmitted over the internet is actually still as it was stored or sent. To do this, blocks of data that are being sent get encoded or get uh, calculated using this mechanism called CRC and then the checksum over that block is stored at the end of that block. There's a lot of literature on CRCs. There's in fact 58 different articles in the CRC Wikipedia page which you can take a look at. The key observations that we make in this uh, presentation are that if you look at the serial implementation of CRCs, the CRC calculation chain has two major things. One is the state of the CRC register itself, which may be a variable length register. In this case, it's a 32-bit CRC. So it's CRC32 and there's 32 bits of state of the CRC itself. And then there's serial data that comes into this uh, shift chain and then gets computed. And then the eventual 32-bit CRC state at the end becomes the checksum that is appended to the data or the message as a digest. Now, the key observations that have been made so far, which relate to the nature of CRC itself, are shown below. Based on the fact that CRC uses two things, the state of the CRC and the data coming in, and these XOR functions somehow use uh, some sort of a uh, change in state equation which is different for various kinds of CRCs. CRC32, which is a pretty standard CRC, has uh, an equation and which is represented here. So the basic math in a CRC still follows certain um, equations and functions. Um, and based on these functions or the understanding of these functions, we can accelerate CRC calculations. And we will learn them uh, later in this presentation. But before we get down to that implementation, let's just highlight the three major equations that can help us. Now, CRC of um, a sum of pieces of uh, you know a message is basically the CR the sum of the CRCs of the pieces. So CRC of sum is sum of CRCs. That is the first equation and translated because the sum is implemented in CRC calculation as an XOR over a Galois field. Therefore, we can actually translate that as CRC X XOR with Y is CRC of X XOR with CRC of Y. And that's a major equation that we, we will use to break down the um, wide CRCs into smaller chunks of, let's say, smaller CRC calculations using this functionality, the second equation mentioned here. And the third part is basically saying that CRC of some number x, where you know your equation is stated in that small x, uh, and then shifted left or multiplied by some power of uh, the function of x, is basically the CRC of x um, shifted by some power and the CRC function run over it. So this is a bit more complicated to understand, but 
the, in, in summary, a CRC of um, some message with a bunch of zeros following it is basically just take the CRC of the um, smaller part and then basically shift it or evolve it using the CRC. Assume that there's zeros behind the CRC itself and then compute that. And um, we will see how um, all these equations put together can simplify the calculation of CRC to a point where we can implement it um, uh, for very high speeds, for very wide buses, because as the speed, you know, as, as we create CRCs for faster and faster data paths, like 10 gigabit to 40 gigabit to 50 gigabit to 100 gigabit to eventually 400 gigabit and terabits, the clock speeds are shrinking. The clock speeds are actually increasing. The clock time period is shrinking. And because the clock time period is shrinking, we have to fit more logic in there. And CRC equations have many, many levels of logic. And so it's not going to fit within those clocks. So we are finding ways by which we can reduce that. So um, the inspiration for this presentation comes from table-based design paper that came from Janssen and Minsa Kim. And in this paper, there is a proposed architecture that uses pipeline design and it uses lookup tables to compute CRC on, let's say, 8-bit uh, input data. And you might ask, what does 8-bit 8, 8 data have to do with calculations at very wide data bits? And if you remember, we, we said that a wide data bus can be decomposed into a sum of many 8-bit data buses. And the math, therefore, basically relies on this fact that we understand the underlying XOR equations and we can basically accelerate them using the fact that we run these calculations on 8 bits and then extend that math to cover 32 bits or 32 bytes, 256 bit or 512 bit wide data buses. Um, in fact, the design is extremely pipelined and it is not it does not affect what the equations are because it's table based tables can be programmed for any compute of 8-bit function to a 32-bit output CRC function so any sort of equation can be mapped in there and it will accelerate it just the same as opposed to a math function which might map to different levels of logic finally the last clock cycle that was not mentioned in this paper uh, we show how to unroll that last stage of pipeline and actually unlock line rate performance from the table-based design. So we take it one step further and we show you how to achieve that so that you can actually achieve very high-speed CRC computations. So um, having said that, let's dive into uh, the design of the table-based CRC here. So in this um, schematic, we show that obviously the CRCs are initialized with all Fs and the input data uh, at the start of packet basically is loaded into the data register, which in our case, we chose it to be 32 bytes because that's a popular width for implementing, let's say a 100 gigabit uh, data path uh, or 100 gigabit, uh, you know, uh, Ethernet. So in this case, basically what happens is that the data is first filled into these input data registers, and then we pass it through 8-bit lookup functions. So it's divided into many, many 32 lookup tables. And uh, you might ask why 32-bit lookup tables? Uh, why eight? Sorry, why 8-bit lookup tables? And I'll explain that in a second. But basically, you can assume that data can be mapped from 8-bit CRCs, 8-bit uh, inputs to 32-bit CRCs, and then based on the math that we described earlier, we can recombine them using XOR logic and, and basically collapse it down to one 32-bit value. So, um, so like we said earlier, the compute of CRC state happens by itself, and then the data 
happens by itself. In fact, each lane, each 8-bit lane of data computes by itself and we have this magic uh, baked into this lookup table so that by location of which byte, was it the LSP byte or the MSP byte or somewhere in the middle, these lookup tables are all different. And we will show you how to achieve that uh, computation in a later presentation. But for now, let's just assume that there is a math that can describe how each byte lane can basically be computed into just a 32-bit CRC by itself, independent of any other lane being present there. So, um, so with with basically just computing this and accelerating this function by pipelining it using these various registers that you see here, uh, and we break it down into like three three layers of registers here, and maybe there is one layer of register up here, and there's some lookup tables, and so. With that idea, the first idea that Minsek Kim uh, paper brings forth is that basically the CRC is uh, is is uh, looked up using a lookup table first and independent of the data itself, and then each lane of data is is looked up through the lookup table and computed. Eventually, all this data is computed and XOR together, and then basically the for the next clock cycle, the CRC is fed back and uh, the next clock cycle of data goes through that same pipeline again and this keeps repeating till the very last clock cycle and the last clock cycle is a bit different and i'll explain that in the next slide but for all the other clock cycles basically it's a simple pipeline you take the input crc if it's the first clock you feed this special data otherwise you keep feeding the previous clock cycles data back and looking up and then for the input data you basically send the input data into this lookup table and then uh, whatever the 32-bit CRCs come out for each 8-bit data, you XOR them and then XOR with the, with the CRC path. And that's the answer. So now let's dive into what happens in the last clock cycle. The last clock cycle is different because uh, in that, what happens is that the CRC itself is only 32 bits. And the data could be, you know, a single byte up to uh, 32 bytes. So the uh, the effect of that is different. If you have one byte, then this CRC function, this lookup table is different. And, and so the way that happens is that we flip the functionality. So we take the CRC of over data captured in the last clock cycle. And... Um, we take the CRC of the previous clock cycle, I say n minus 1, which is not including the CRC's evolution over the last clock cycle. And we feed that based on what the however many bytes are valid in the last clock cycle. So if there's only one byte valid, only the top byte of CRC is fed here, and the remaining bytes are basically just shifted and XORed uh, with the logic. So the modification to the main design that we have done is that we feed basically instead of feeding back we feed it forward and we compute the crc's evolution in that last clock cycle using this extra stage and and after this extra stage we basically achieve the xor the same way the crc over the data and the crc evolution in the last clock cycle unfolded and mapped back produces the final CRC which is stored here and so in summary basically this design uses the ideas um, proposed by uh, Minsik and Jensen but we have basically uncovered an idea of unfolding the last clock cycle and unrolling the pipeline for even higher rate speed uh, calculations of the CRC so they can potentially achieve line rate computation. In a future presentation, we will discuss uh, the actual implementation, uh, perhaps in Verilog or how these tables can be computed, uh, some of the algorithms on how just by knowing the serial equation you can actually compute it. And also we will discuss some of the uh, inner workings of CRC because there is ordering of bits and bytes and also there's mirroring of bits and bytes. It's different between the CRC bits. 
how they're mirrored in the regular data bits, how they're mirrored. So with that, I think we'd conclude this presentation and uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, liked this um, presentation and hopefully it helps you in your own implementa implementations. Thanks very much for listening and until later, bye-bye.